March 26, 2020, I managed to book a flight in Air France La Première that usually costs $15,000 for less than $500. I was so excited for the insane first class experience with only four seats in the cabin, the world class fine dining, the private car transfer from the lounge, and then Air France took it all away. But this is the story of how I took it back and flew Air France La Première at a fraction of the price. If you like to travel, you know that airlines hold all the power. They can nickel and dime you every step along the way, and yet they can change the rules on passengers and arbitrarily enforce the rules, leaving you with no recourse. But with the right strategies, you can beat the airlines at their own game. And in this video, I'll share with you five lessons I learned for doing exactly that as I pursued the Air France La Première experience across a two year period, culminating in a wild 36 hours all over Western Europe. If you're an avid traveler, you're gonna want to pay attention to these tips, especially in the coming years when everything is so uncertain. And hey, if you've already been following the story from princeoftravel.com, then stick around for later on in the video for a surprise Act 4.5. So it all started back in March 2020 when I saw people on the Flyer Talk website talking about a super discounted fare in the ultra luxurious Air France La Première cabin, starting in Algiers, the capital of Algeria, going to Paris, and then going to the United States. Normally, this ticket costs over $15,000, but this was available for only $500 US dollars. So without thinking for another second, I went ahead and booked it. And that's in fact lesson one of how to beat the airlines at their own game. If you see a fare that you like, go ahead and book it immediately because there's no telling how long it'll last. Making hotel bookings, researching what to do at the destination, asking your significant other if they want to join, all that can happen later on. You got to book now and ask questions later. Now, even though this particular fare from Algiers is obviously no longer longer available, keep this lesson in mind for super sales that we see in the future. We can't predict which airlines will come up with these super discounted sales, but we can predict that at some point, some airline somewhere in the world will offer a super discounted fare like this that is going to be very attractive. After you've booked, there's a bit of a waiting period to see whether the deal will be honored. Sometimes it will be honored like Cathay Pacific with their first class fares for $900 back in 2019. Sometimes it won't be honored like Tap Air Portugal's $200 business class round trip transatlantic fares. And sometimes, as in the case of these Air France La Première fares, you're gonna be able to play the game. By the way, quick side note here, deals this good don't come around often, but when they do, they are super discounted fares. You might hear them referred to as mistake fares, but in reality, the only mistake is the one the airline makes when they decide not to honor a price that they advertised. That's an important definition for you to keep in mind. So in my case, I snagged this really good deal and I was so excited to fly Air France La Première until I got this email in my inbox telling me that my fare had been downgraded into business class. Now this was devastating news for me and here's why. Obviously here at Prince of Travel, we talk a lot about using points to fly around the world in business class and first class. And I personally have a dream of flying on all the major first class products on different airlines around the world. However, Air France La Première is notoriously hard to book on points. So when the $500 fare came up, I knew I had to snag that deal. And when Air France downgraded me into business class, that was really hard to take because my dream of La Première looked to be in tatters. Or was it? I thought to myself, what if we could convince Air France's frontline representatives that the downgrade to business class was only a system glitch, and that in fact I should be in first class and that they should help me reinstate the ticket into first class. This is where lesson two comes in, master the human element. When it comes to dealing with big organizations like airlines, banks, and loyalty programs, the company itself might have set out a certain policy, but when it comes to enforcing that policy, it comes down to human beings like you and me. And when dealing with human beings, there's always a bit of latitude for getting them on your side and having them help you out to get what you want. Now, it wasn't actually myself who spoke to the Air France phone reps. Instead, I enlisted the help of my assistant, Rachel, who has well and truly mastered the human element. Let's give her a call. So Rachel, during those couple months when I needed to call Air France and kind of push the flight back and reinstate into first class, how did you actually get that done? That actually wasn't too difficult. It was pretty easy to call into the call center and explain that, you know, like I had a first class fare. Um, it's somehow in business class, like, I don't know what happened. Can you fix it? And if you experience any pushback, it was really easy to be like, oh, you know, like, I still need to think about it. Like, I'm not sure about my date yet. Like, I'll call back later. 
and then hang up. So there you have it. Whenever you're in a situation when you're trying to convince an agent to be on your side and help you out, let's say you've booked a ticket on points and there's a schedule change and you're trying to convince the agent to put you into a more favorable routing or a better product, then just like Rachel said, you've got to master the human element, know when to push forward and know when to take a step back and perhaps end the call to try again with a different agent. Now, after successfully reinstating the ticket in first class, there were still lots of obstacles in my way. For one, because of the pandemic, I wasn't allowed to board a flight leaving Paris going to San Francisco because I wasn't a US resident. But thankfully, Air France kept canceling the Algiers Paris flight. And so we kept pushing the date back and back and back until it was December 2021 and it was finally time to fly this fare. There was still one major obstacle in our way though that threatened to scupper the whole thing. And that's the fact that Algeria was still closed to entry. So there wasn't a very feasible way for me to get to Algeria to start flying this ticket unless I booked a one-way ticket into Algiers on the day of my flight and did a transit without visa at Algiers airport. We even called the Algerian embassy in Ottawa to confirm that it was in fact possible to do a transit without visa. So I go ahead and look on Google flights. And because of how heavily restricted the flights into Algeria are, the only possible option is a flight with Spanish low cost carrier Vueling Airlines from Barcelona to Algiers priced at a whopping 595 euros one way. Yep, it was pretty ridiculous, but I still went ahead and paid for that flight because even $500 for the original fare plus 595 euros would still be a great deal for Air France La Première and it was very much now or never to fly Air France La Première at such a screaming deal. This part, by the way, is the Act 4.5 that didn't make it into the original story. Why? Well, I was waiting for a resolution and stick around to find out what that resolution is. So anyway, I show up to Barcelona airport ready to board my very expensive flight to Algiers and finally start my luxurious La Première journey after two years of waiting. I give the agent my passport and tell them I'm doing a transit without visa in Algeria. And you guessed it, the agent says that no such policy exists and that I do need a visa to go to Algeria. So I had a feeling this might happen. So I very quickly escalated to the station manager of Welling Airlines at Barcelona airport. But unfortunately he sticks by the policy and let me know that I need a visa to board the flight and I don't have a visa. And I'm telling him I'm doing a transit without visa. I don't need to enter the country. And he's telling me, no senor, necesitas un visa para embarcar a Argelia. And this is where I was about to lose my temper with the Welling guy because I had researched the policy I had called the embassy to figure out that transit without visa is possible. And I had so much on the line with this luxurious La Premiere experience that I was so looking forward to. I was about to explode at this guy until I remembered lesson three, pick your battles wisely. Vueling is a low cost carrier. The more I thought about it, the more I realized that there's no way I can expect Vueling to help me out with a semi-official immigration policy like this. As much as I could have screamed and shouted at the station manager in Barcelona, that wouldn't have gotten me anywhere. And instead, a much wiser way to deal with the situation would be to do a chargeback on my credit card for the Vueling flight because of being incorrectly denied boarding and therefore the goods and services that I paid for not being rendered. And that's exactly what I ended up doing after this whole episode, the dispute cleared successfully and I got all my money back. And here's a quick extra tip for you guys. That's why I like to book a lot of my travel on American Express credit cards because their chargeback processes are a lot more user friendly than Visa and MasterCard. Keep that in mind. But anyway, I still had a major problem on my hands when I was sitting there in Barcelona airport because if I couldn't board that flight to Algeria, then I would not be able to catch the first flight from Algeria to Paris and thereby the subsequent flight from Paris to San Francisco in La Première that I had always Always dreamed of. And remember, the lesson is pick your battles wisely. So I realized now's the time to get back on the phone with Air France and see what the agents could do for me. Or more accurately, now's the time to get back on the phone with Rachel. It wasn't easy. And um, at that time, it was already pretty late Eastern. So the North American call center had gone down for the night, which was quite unfortunate, which means we had to call, you know, the international call centers. And you ended up staying up pretty late for that, didn't you? Yeah, I ended up staying pretty late. I think about 4 a.m. Eastern. However, uh, I wasn't able to get it done. And then you were like, yeah, like, go, go to sleep. By the way, some of you guys are saying that I got to give Rachel a nice bonus for staying up till 4 a.m. to help me call Air France. Give this video a like down below. However many likes the video has in, let's say, one week, that's going to be the number of dollars that Rachel gets as her bonus. Rachel has to go to sleep, so now I have to call. I try a bunch of call centers around Europe, and eventually the Air France Croatia call center has the shortest hold times, so I end up giving them a bunch of calls 
and I find out that it's possible to salvage my ticket. Even though there's no way I can possibly catch that Algiers Paris flight at the start, I would be allowed to skip that segment and only fly Paris San Francisco the following day, if and only if I paid a 1500 euro penalty for taking the coupons out of sequence. Which, I mean, 1500 euros is a lot of money, but it's still gonna be a fraction of the price of Air France La Première normally. Plus, my alternative if I didn't fly La Première back would have been to redeem 100,000 Aeroplan points to fly Lufthansa First Class through Frankfurt instead. And when you think about it, 100,000 points, 1500 euros, the value is about the same, but the 1500 euros to fly Air France La Première is a once in a lifetime opportunity. So I went ahead and pursued it. The thing is by the terms and conditions, this 1500 euro penalty has to be paid at the airport on the date of travel, which means I needed to get myself from Barcelona to Paris that evening. And when I went to look for the best flights that evening, you'll never guess which airline came up as the best option. It was Vueling Airlines. That's right, the very same airline that had denied me boarding earlier that day that had caused the whole fiasco in the first place. Now I flew with them from Barcelona to Paris and I landed in Paris and it was now time to go pay that 1500 euro penalty to ensure a smooth journey on La Première the following day. And that brings me to lesson four, which is be ready to change your plans at any given moment. This was true before the pandemic, but it's even more true now with so many unpredictable things going on. You might test positive in a foreign country, the airline might change your flight schedule, or you might find yourself in a situation in which you really do need to take advantage of certain favorable fare policies in order to get on a flight that you want and you need to reposition yourself at the last minute in order to do so. In this new day and age of travel, you really do need to develop a certain comfort with uncertainty and flexibility. And it really helps to have a strong network that can help you at a moment's notice, whatever your situation may be. And if you're looking to build that strong network, consider signing up for Prince of Travel membership, where you'll get access to a Discord chat server with all of your fellow points and travel enthusiasts. If you're stuck somewhere in a foreign country, if you're dealing with a moment of uncertainty along your travels and you need help, all of your fellow Prince of Travel members can rally together and find you a solution. What's more, you'll also be able to chat with your fellow members on a day-to-day -day basis and build those relationships that will help you be able to earn more points, book more travel, and experience more of the world, especially during these uncertain times going forward. If you're interested in signing up for membership, check out the link in the description below, and I'll see you in the Prince of Travel Club Lounge on Discord. And as I was sitting on the plane, I was thinking to myself, this has been an absolutely crazy day, and I really, really hope everything works out and I get to fly La Première tomorrow. But little did I know things were only about to get crazier because as I showed up at the Air France ticketing desk in Paris, could not have predicted what happened next. I approached the agent ready to pay the 1500 euro penalty. He takes a look at the fare. His colleague comes over and takes a look and she goes, c'est quoi ça? C'est pas correct. And they notice the $500 fare. Sir, this is not a La Première fare. I can reissue the ticket for travel tomorrow, but you'll be downgraded to economy class. Lesson one, I booked this fare and now it's gotten me here. Lesson two, the human element isn't gonna help with this human being in front of me. Lesson three, I picked this battle, but it might be one battle too far. Lesson four, I'm always ready to change my plans, but this change is gonna sting. Lesson five, stay in the game. At this point, my mind is spinning. My ticket is going to get downgraded into economy class, which means that this was all for nothing. I snagged that $500 deal. I spent hours and hours on the phone with Air France. I came all the way over to Barcelona to start the ticket in Algiers, got denied boarding by Vueling Airlines, managed to somehow find a way to start the ticket in Paris, but now the dream was dead. Or was it? We've been downgraded from first class before. And then we were able to persuade Air France's phone agents to do the right thing and reinstate the ticket into first class. Maybe, just maybe, we could do it again. So I say to the agent, okay, go ahead with the downgrade as long as you can clear the Algiers Paris flight that I missed today and I can go ahead and fly on Paris San Francisco tomorrow. And once that's done, I retreat to the airport concourse and I give Rachel a call. I was living Airs that day, I, I was driving a couple of people over to the US to do their Nexus interviews and I was in the car and then you were like, I really need to go to sleep, which makes sense because you've already been up for like, God knows how many hours. So I wasn't listening to music over this like three hour drive. It was just like Air France hold music. 
<laughs> and it's 3.30 a.m. in Paris. I've gotten about three hours of sleep and I go ahead and film this video vlog intro in my hotel room. Welcome to the Moxie Paris airport early in the morning today where we're gonna be flying over to San Francisco on Lufthansa first class. As you can tell, I've already given up hope and I was ready to fly Lufthansa first class on the way back to North America. But I still had one sliver of hope left, so I went ahead and also filmed this video intro. Aujourd'hui, nous allons à San Francisco avec Air France La Première. But to be honest with you, that sliver of hope was rapidly dwindling. And as I made my way back to Charles de Gaulle Airport and checked into the Lufthansa flight, I had truly given up and I made a big mistake here. You see, lesson five is stay in the game. Even though I was checking in for my flight to Frankfurt to fly Lufthansa first class, on the off chance that Rachel could persuade Air France into reinstating me into La Première, I would need to abandon those plans and make my way to the La Première lounge for check-in. And so when I was checking in, I foolishly decided to check my bag for the Paris Lufthansa flight, which really proved to be an inconvenience later on. So I went through security, I went to the lounge, I kept filming my vlog for Lufthansa First Class, and then I went to board Lufthansa First Class. I put my belongings away, I sat down in the business class seat, and I was ready to give up all hope of flying Air France La Première until I looked at my phone one last time. Did you bop -sard? Check now. She said she put it in F. At this point, I suddenly realized I needed to get off this plane right now because I was back in La Première on the flight departing in a few hours, but if this flight departed for Frankfurt with me on board, there would be no going back. I bolted upright, grabbed all my belongings, and ran out of the door that was seconds away from closing. The Lufthansa captain was rightfully angry with me because they'd have to unload my bag if I wasn't gonna be on the flight. I was very apologetic, but I had come way too far at this point not to put into practice. Lesson five, stay in the game and don't be stupid and check a bag if you're doing a last minute deplaning. At this point, you're probably wondering what the actual Air France La Première experience turned out to be like, and whether this 12 hour luxurious flight was actually worth all the trouble that I went through. And you can go ahead and check out our full flight review vlog from Air France La Première on our second channel right here. 